In previous versions of Simca, the dataset merge functionality was restricted to primary ID only. In Simca 16, we have implemented a more flexible dataset merge that allows you to merge datasets using many different criteria. In this demo, I will show examples of typical criteria in the two types of merge, side by side to merge process data of different sampling frequency, and above and below to merge two spectral datasets with different wavelength resolution. We start with some batch process data. Here to the left, we have process data collected every second minute, and to the right, we have manually sampled at line data collected a few times every day. And the objective is to merge these two data sets so that the at line data is aligned into the process data table at the correct time points so that we can model them together. The merging in Simca will delete the slave data set, so before merging it, it is recommended that you save a copy of your project. And this is due to Simca not allowing the same observations to have values for the same variables in two places. So we start by clicking Save. The new merge functionality is located in the Data tab, together with other data set modification tools. And we can see that we have three different options for side by side and three different options for top bottom. The first option for side-by-side -side merging is where one of the data sets, the left one, is a master data set and will be kept intact. The right side data set, the slave, will be merged into the master data set. The second option will only keep the rows that are common between the two data sets. This is called intersect merging. And finally, the third, the full merge option, will keep all rows from bo both data sets, even if they don't match. We select the first merge option, since we want to merge the at line data into the process data. The process data will then act as the master data set with its timestamps intact, and the at line data set will be merged into the master data set and then be deleted. The green and the blue colors in the merge visualization represent the two data set. The left, green, is the master data set, the process data, which is complete and the blue represents the slave data set, in our case, the at line data. If you look carefully, there are actually two shades of blue. A darker shade at the top indicate where we have a match and a lighter shade everywhere else. This lighter shade is because by default, Simca will fill in the last good value after each matching row. Selecting insert missing will leave uh, only the darker blue, the matching rows indicated. Using a last good value is recommended for this type of data since the at line columns otherwise would be have a very high degree of missing data and that negatively affects the modeling. In a Simca batch project, all data sets must have a batch ID column and this is then by default selected as an exact match in the merge dialog. For regular projects, there is no mandatory matching column selected in the merge dialog. We can then add additional criteria by clicking on the plus sign in the empty row below the batch ID. And in our case, we want to match on time. So from the process data set, I select the timestamp. From the at line data, I select the sample time. But we don't want to use exact matching since we don't have a perfectly matching timestamps. This can be seen in the visualization below where we don't have any blue rows and we can see that it's a 0% match. Instead, we can choose to match the at line data to the nearest process data time point, which is now indicated by the blue, the darker blue lines. But in this case, we are likely to end up in a situation where the at line data sample time is matched to a process time with an earlier timestamp because it was nearest. This does not represent reality since the data from a sample should never be allowed to be matched backwards to an earlier point in time. So to counteract this, we choose the merging criteria forward instead. Forward means that every at line sample row will be matched to the nearest process data row after the sample time, aligning it forward in time. 
this setting ensures that the sampled atline data will never be assigned to a process data row of an earlier timestamp. We can now see in the merge visualization that the darker blue atline rows have been matched on different locations throughout the process data. The columns in the slave data set used for matching, in this case the sample time column, will be removed from the final data set, but if you want to keep it, you can do so in the options menu. And if you have a data set with many faces, this is also where you can decide if you want to let the last good value cross over into the next phase. The atline data set is removed and the atline columns have been added at the end of the process data. Let's now try the second type of merging, the top bottom merging. In this example, we have two NIR data sets with different wavelength resolution. The master data set has a resolution of every second nanometer and the additional data set have a lower resolution every fourth nanometer. What we want to do is to merge these two data sets with each other in such a way that we keep the higher resolution and interpolate the values missing in the lower resolution data set. The higher resolution data set contains observations up to 52, if I scroll down, and the lower resolution data set have observation number higher than 52. And this is just so that we can see that they are merged later on. In this setup, we have an exact match of wavelengths. So every wavelength in the lower resolution can be found in the higher resolution data set. But that is, of course, not necessary for the merging. We start the merging from the data tab. And now we select the first choice from the top bottom selection. This will keep all the variables from the top uh, master data set and align the second data into it. We can see that the full resolution data set is already selected as the master data set. In the visualization, we see that this master data set, the green, is placed on top and the lower resolution data set is placed below. And if we look really carefully, we can see that the blue section only have data in every second column. Since the wave numbers are in the primary ID, we don't need to change the selection of rows here. But instead of an exact match, we want to interpolate over the gaps in the data. So the low resolution data set now disappears and the observations, 53 and on, onwards, can be found inside of the, the full resolution data set. And we can see that the interpolation have made complete rows. That concludes this short introduction to the new flexible merging functionality. Hope you find this addition to Simca 16 useful and keep your eyes open for more videos in the feed on the start page of Simca or search for Sartorius Stedim Data Analytics on YouTube. Thanks for watching.